That, that's about CoForge. Let's talk about uh, popular vehicles. Uh, remember, it's the end of the fourth quarter, but the company has reported their third quarter numbers right now. The reason for that is because they recently did their IPO. And we've been talking about uh, the company and with the management through the IPO and post their listing as well. Naveen Philip joins us once again to discuss their third quarter numbers in detail. Thanks a lot, Naveen, for joining in. First nine months of this year, 40 to 75 crores. And we're speaking at a time when the first 12 months of this year are done as well. So, could you give us a sense of how the fourth quarter panned out for the company and what the outlook for FY25 is on the revenues and margins? So, in terms of quarter to quarter, we have uh, increased. If you look at nine months, we've gone up by about 20% in terms of revenue terms. And in terms of uh, EBITDA terms, we've gone up by 23% uh, to a total EBITDA of about 216-odd crores in the nine months listing. And our PAT has gone up by about 12.5% to 56 crores from last year's 44, 45 crores. So we, we are in line with what we have uh, spoken to the market while we were listing in the IPO, and we continue to hold that uh, viewpoint. That's the number, or these numbers have panned out in the full year as well, because we are done with the fourth quarter too. So if you have to extrapolate that 20% growth for this year, it would come to closer to 5,800 crores, between 5,800 to 6,000 yeah, crores. Would that you end the year with? Yeah, in, in terms of revenue terms, we're just collating the figures, but that's what we're looking at uh, terms of uh, the numbers. All right. And hi, Naveen. Uh, good to see you in Nigel on this side. And whatever you delivered in FI24, you'll see a 25% growth on that, right? Yeah. So if you look at it as we stand today, in terms of EBITDA, we've grown by about 23 And in terms of overall PAT by about 12.5%. But if you look at Q3 versus Q3, our PAT mm -hmm. increase is about 50%. Because last year, there was a chip shortage in Q3. Uh, so in terms of holding costs, etc., that has been... Uh, factored into in this year per se. Uh, but no. overall, that has been increased in quarter, quarter three to quarter three is about 50%, but overall is about 12.5% for the nine months. You know, what I'm asking you is for the next year, FY25, it'll be a 20-25% 20, growth, right, is what you're looking so, at. So if you look at our CAGR for the last three years, even if you look at this year, Visavi, last year, we've been going about 19 to 20% CAGR. Uh, so we hope to hold that in the future growth also. All right, 19 to 20% CAGR is something that uh, the street should be working with. And uh, how has the growth of your services business been in uh, the third? F and I, I mean, when we speak about uh, the numbers now, let's talk about H2. Third quarter yeah. is what you've given, fourth quarter is what's done already. How has services grown in this period? And how is that likely to grow? Because you had said that uh, you're looking at sales of services coming in more than 25% versus 15% yeah. what it was. So, so services growth has been about 19% by revenue if you look at uh, nine months ended uh, uh, year on year. Uh, the shortfall that happened was from Chennai basically because we had floods in the third quarter there, uh, which we are recovering from. But otherwise, we are holding the view that we'll still be growing at the rate at which we had mentioned. All right. And margins, you said, uh, you know, EBITDA for the first nine months increased by 23%. That's likely to be the case in uh, the full year as well. The next year as well, will your EBITDA grow faster than your revenue? What kind of margins are we looking at? So we are hoping to grow by that way, but I can't put a figure to it per se. But what we are looking at is in terms of the same care that we have demonstrated in the past three, four years to go forward also. Okay, I want to understand how you're outpacing the market. And if you could tell us what is the industry growing at for used cars as well as for new cars? What is the rough number? So if you look at industry, All India, uh, if you look at the nine months that have ended, uh, it's approximately a 10% growth. But in the markets that we were present in, that's Kerala, Chennai, etc., in terms of overall passenger vehicle industry, uh, the growth has been slightly muted. If you look at Marathi, growth has been in the region of about 2% uh, in Kerala and about 18% in Chennai. But the market share has grown by about 5-6% in both these states as such. So that has helped us in terms of our growth also. Okay. Now, if I look Wait, at your, you know, sec hmm, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. No, no. So the used car is about delta two three percent above the new car sales. Okay. So used car is two three percent above the new car, and the new car is roughly about ten percent, is what you're saying, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And you know, if I look at your revenue mix right now in the third quarter, seven fifty crores comes in from passenger vehicles. That grew just about two percent. Luxury has been growing very fast. One hundred percent growth out there. It's about one hundred and thirteen crores. And CVs have grown by 35% at around 465 crores. Yesterday, we yeah. spoke to the Federation of Automobile Dealers Association. They believe that luxury will grow, SUVs will grow. 
CVs, they are not yet very sure because there is the election in the, the very near future as well. So what kind of growth do you foresee in all three segments in FY25? So if you look at uh, luxury craft growth uh, year on year, last year and the year before last, there was extreme cheap shopping, especially for JLR. So if you look at JLR wholesale volumes across India has also grown by about 16% if I'm not mistaken. So that growth is translated. Going forward, whether we'll have the stupendous growth that we had this year in terms of luxury vehicles, I'm not too sure because it was two years of COVID and the back of that was the growth that, we, that happened this year. In terms of passenger car, I said, whether the industry grows probably will be about 4 to 5% or 6% at the maximum. We we were keeping in line with what our growth is because we are both organic and inorganic growth. That was. In terms of commercial vehicles, usually in the election year, especially the uh, Lok Sabha elections, the first quarter or the quarter that the election happens is very muted. But post that, there's a growth. Tata Motors has given a, uh, uh, a view that the growth for this year will be as good as, as last year in terms of overall growth, especially the construct equipment. In the spaces that we are in, we have both the mix of both small commercial vehicles and construction. So small commercial vehicles has been muted the last two years or one, in the last 18 months rather. So we're expecting a growth in the small commercial vehicles to a much larger extent. Mm. You briefly mentioned in passing about some inorganic growth. Are you looking at a couple of companies? Should we hear something about it in FY25? Uh, hopefully, yeah. In Q2 and Q3, we should be able to hopefully announce something. Else. Interesting. Yeah. What could... Okay, at least give us some insight then. What could be the size of the transaction? How does it no, work so for we, you all in terms we, of a multiple? No, no. We're just in dialogue. So, it will be too early to comment on the exact numbers, etc. But yeah, right. hopefully, but, uh, we should be able to do something. No, what I'm trying to understand is if you're going to buy it, at least how big will you buy it? You know, what could be the size of the acquisition? I think this question was asked even during the IPO. <laughs> they are, uh, <laughs> acquisitions no, MBA, but this time do... you're at least telling us that by quarter three, quarter four, quarter, I mean, quarter two, quarter three, we could hear something. So our appetite yeah, so, as well has been revved up. Now we want to know yeah, more. So, so I'm saying every year uh, we have been able to acquire in terms of both last year we acquired in Maharashtra and that has led mm. to the growth of about 25-30%. So we are hoping that in, in terms of acquisitions, it would be in those sizes. Okay, so you, during the IPO had said you typically do one to two dealership acquisitions every year. FY24, you did not. Uh, I presume that it's also because you all were busy with the IPO and, you know, consolidating the previous year's acquisitions, etc. FY25, in the second half, we could uh, see some acquisitions. What I want to understand is that, you know, will this be in the same geographies that you operate or will this be in the other geographies as well? And will the size be similar to what you've done in the past? I like the leading question, but yeah, we would we would look at expanding our geography, our footprint also. So both in geographies that we are present in and in new geographies. All right, uh, you like the leading questions, but we like uh, clearer answers out here. But uh, you know, be that as it may, we'll yeah. we'll we'll Thank speak you. about it uh, when that happens. Uh, final question sure. then: Your revenue mix itself, eighty percent is still concentrated towards the south. Uh, do you plan on this moving outside of south as well? What's the target for FY twenty five here? Yes, so we've, we've always been trying to reduce our revenue mix in terms of state concentration or right? and that we going forward, we'll keep at that. So even Maharashtra has contributed a large part of the revenue this time also. And uh, Maharashtra oh. revenue has grown up by about 50-60%. Okay, always good speaking to you, sir. Thanks a lot for stopping by and giving Thank us you. some more details. We'll chat with you once you announce the next quarter's numbers as well.